Um, my name is Susan Richardson, and my very first game was probably in November of the very first year, and I knew nothing about hockey. A friend of mine called at dinner and asked me if I wanted to go to a game with her that night, and I said, if it's anything like basketball, no. But um, I went and was totally hooked before the game was over. Um, we were, it was a Lansing Lancers home game at Wing Stadium, and we probably lost because we really didn't win very many games that year. Um, it was very exciting. My seats were right next to Mr. and Mrs. Parfait, and every time we scored or anything happened, Mr. Parfait would hit me, and they would say, just hit him back, and I said, oh no, I'm just new here, so it was fun. Um, but the first year after that, whenever I wanted to go to a game, and none of my friends liked hockey, I would pay for their gas, and I would buy their tickets, just if they would drive me there, because I didn't, so I didn't drive. I even lugged my parents there one night. I mean, it was that how bad it was. Um, and I bought season tickets the next year. I have been a season ticket holder for 43 years. I missed the first year. And then when the first year of um, the UHL was also year 2000, I think. Um, Gilmore's closed, which I had been employed with for 35 years and didn't think my unemployment money needed to go to hockey tickets, but I did get a job at the Radisson the first week I was off work, before I was off work, but I didn't know what hours I was going to work. But I went to all the games, just didn't have season tickets. Um, I think it's, I think the players are smarter. I think they have more skill, they're faster. Um, I think they can, the whole leagues concentrate more on player safety than they did back then when um, 45 years ago they didn't wear helmets to play unless they wanted to. Now they have all the gear. Um, I think they're much more worried about um, concussions and serious injuries like that um, in the whole, and there's less fights, which is good. I mean, we don't have out of control players going up in the crowds very often, which we did back then a lot. But the players themselves have changed a lot. A lot back 45 years ago, those players were very young and just came out of juniors. Most of them had not even a high school education. Um, and now most of them have college educations. And I, so I'm not saying it one way is wrong or another, but I think they're a lot better um, equipped to go into life after hockey. Attendance, um, the first year, was up and down because it was new. Um, but then when we had the winning years, it was some of them we had really good crowds. But even when the playoffs came up, they would go down. And I think in the last couple years, we've seen attendance grow. We have a lot of the same fan base we had 45 years ago that are loyal um, fans that are either season ticket holders or just come on daily basis, but they're kind of like family because we get to know everybody. Um, but I know it's they've struggled with attendance, but I think with the staff they have now, they're really working on it, and I think they're being successful. The booster club has changed over the years. We did have a booster club, very large booster club, um, in the first years. And I was vice president for a long time. And one of my friends, Judy, was the president. And um, we had a lot of fun. We did not do the things that the booster club does now that I think is amazing. The booster club now sets up the apartments for the guys 
gives them dishes and all the equipment they need, you know, the household things they need. They do um, bring snacks on the bus. We never did all that stuff. We might have had a few members that did it, but not. But our big thing was bus trips, and we went to probably every stadium at least once. And our most, the most popular one was always the Milwaukee overnight one because Milwaukee was just such a fun place to go. And, um, and it was such a big stadium. It was the old stadium back then, but it was right downtown and we'd always go shopping and to all the bars and stuff. And it was just a fun, it was always fun. Um, but back in those days, we, we have to remember those were the first years of slap shot. So sometimes the buses got a little unruly. I mean, yes, we all had our fake noses and our, our black gla um, glasses, and some of them had foil. And I can't say there wasn't any mooning, but um, when there was a letters of apology was written to the stadium and the players, and it was taken care of. And they were not allowed on the bus the next time, and it never happened again. So, oh, that's great. but slap shot was a big thing back then because it was new. And we knew a lot of the players because they played in the IHL. Yeah, actually. The Carlsons and. The, 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 the brother of the woman that wrote that movie played, played for rest. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So it was it really hit home. Um, also, but one of the things the Booster Club did back then, which shows dating, it, because we made scrapbooks for all the players. At the beginning of the year, we drew names and we made a scrapbook. And those were elaborate scrapbooks. I mean, we put every newspaper article that was written, which nowadays there would be none, and, um, but was before internet and it was before all that thing. And we had pictures and programs and everything. And some of those scrapbooks were really thick. And we, then we had a part at the end of the year and always gave it to them. Um, but there was always a couple members that didn't get theirs done. And so there was about five of us girls that would get together before the party and have to put rubber cement glue, all these pictures and articles in this thing. And sometimes we were just like dizzy before the night was over. They all thought we were drunk, but we weren't. It was rubber cement that we'd buy by the jugs. So, but somebody says, why don't they do scrapbooks now? There's no reason to, because everything's on the internet. Um, my favorite play, I've always had a favorite player or more. Um, probably the first year my favorite player was Greg Steele. Probably always will be. He's still friends of mine. He lives in Florida. He's, I liked the way he played. I just liked him as a person. Um, and then um, the other one was Doug Dirksen. And Doug Dirksen was a really quiet player, but he was really um, a good player. He, he was great at face-offs, and he was good at scoring goals. And he, matter of fact, he scored the winning goal, one, I think, in the first Turner Cup year. And he, he was just, he always one of my favorites. How about more recent times? Hmm? More, more recent. And you know what? A lot of, and back then, my, one of my favorites that I got really close with was the trainer, Terry Roof. And I think it was because I made his scrapbook, and I've always stayed friends with him and his wife. And they always still bring up that scrapbook that they had it. You know, um, recent, and then Paul Picard, I have loved Paul Picard since he came to Kalamazoo. I can remember the game in Saginaw. We were at a um, bus trip, and he came out of the locker room, and it was his first game there, and he said, hi, I'm Paul Picard, number five, and we all laughed at him. And to this day, we still call him Paul Picard, number five, after he's been to every, all his positions, and him and I are still friends, and through all that he's been, we went through, 
Um, he was always a favorite. Um, and recently, I think right now, probably my favorites are Ben Wilson and Justin Taylor. Um, I know them from the gym and I know them from, you know, outside the arena, but they're just, I, I really respect both of them. Um, most rememberable game, memorable game um, I'm, was probably the first Turner Cup we won. We were in the, it was the seventh game and it was in Grand Rapids against the Owls. Um, we both had, both clubs fans wore red um, jackets. So when we went up to buy the tickets for the seventh game, they thought we were, some, most of us, they thought that we were Owls fans, so they gave us um, really good seats. Well, then the K-Wings fans got there and they scattered us all over the whole stadium, which didn't help them because there was probably as many of us as there was them. And it was a little stadium anyway. And the um, and our security and faculty and everybody went, and naturally. And um, a funny story is we had all had air horns back then. Well, Kalamazoo, none of the um, arenas, um, marinas had air. So some of my friends went up to Grand Rapids and found this marina and they said, do you have any air for air horns? And they said, yes, they had one case left. And they had their red booster club jackets on, which the guy thought they were owl's jackets because he didn't look at the back. And he t was so nice, he carried them out to the car after he sold them the whole, all the rest of the air and put them in the trunk and saw the, all the K-Wing stickers and didn't know what he had done. It sold the opposition. So we had all the air for the air, the air horns that night, so it was pretty noisy. Um, but, and then after that game, it was, I think we won it in the third period, we um, partied at the stadium. We, then we went back to the stadium at, in Kalamazoo, like, um, and were there until wee hours in the morning. And then the owner of Pizza King opened up his, on Portage Street, who was a K-Wings fan, um, opened up the pizza place. And we went there, and I finally got home. Um, it was when my mother was going to work at 5 a.m., I think. And I was, thought, oh, I'll go to sleep for a little while and get up and go to work. Well, I called my boss and said, I'm not coming in. I have too much to do today. We had a luncheon at noon. We had a parade in Bronson, from Bronson Park all the way through town. And then there was another big party put on by High Wheeler that night um, that they made this, it was supposed to be Guinness World Biggest Sunday. And so that was all that. And we partied, I mean, for days, days. The next one was the following year when we won the second Turner Cup. And it was in Fort Wayne, which had a whole different feeling because that was the week of the final, the final week of playoffs was the week that the tornado hit Kalamazoo on May 13th. And um, a lot of us worked at Gilmore's and was destroyed and we lost employees and we lost so many people in Kalamazoo with injuries that the whole feeling was different. And we did win it. Um, and that year we lost our goalie, our starting goalie in the playoffs with a broken leg. And George Gagnon was a rookie and he had to come in and finish the playoffs, which we won it. Um, but he, but it was, there was no parade because Kalamazoo was a disaster. And, um, but I felt then at that one time that the Fort Wayne fans really cared about us because they, I had phone calls that people knew me called to see if I was all right, and they would come up to the games and ask if we were all right. I 
still of my K wings up and down, and um, I think I think they're on the right direction. Um, I know we'll always have new players, but I think that's always good. So.